The hunt for the perfect ultrabook in 2020 is not over yet. Today we are gonna unbox and take a first look at the ASUS ZenBook 14 UM425. I'm W2Best, I make videos about tech travel and inspiration and if you like my content it would be super nice if you wanted to like the video and maybe even subscribe to this channel. I have a lot of good content lined up and if you like in-depth review and tutorial content, I think you would be really happy to subscribe to this channel and get my content in the upcoming weeks and months. I have made a video before about the UM425. However, when I was testing it out in a store, one of my major gripes was that it doesn't have a 3.5mm headphone jack. I have realized now over the last two months that when I'm in the office working, I normally don't use the 3.5mm headphone jack. It's more when I'm traveling and right now it's impossible to travel. I'm not traveling much at all. Not at all like I used to do before coronavirus started hitting the world. So I figured that I will give ASUS a go here and see how bad is it to live without the 3.5mm headphone jack. And is it fine to use the ZenBook 14 anyhow because it's got a lot of good things going for it. But first of all, let's unbox it and see what the first impressions are. This is Jonas from the future jumping in to say that I had a thought that this would be my main driver for a while so that I could try if it was a good experience and a good competitor to the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7, which it didn't really show to be. So just stay tuned for some more info on what happened here and why I decided to return it right away without even giving it much of a further go. Okay, let's get right into it. Here we have the box of the UM425, the ASUS ZenBook 14. Here the specification says that it's the AMD Ryzen 5 4500U with a 512GB PCIe Gen 3 SSD. It has LPDDR4X 8GB onboard memory, Wi-Fi 6, USB 3.1A and USB 3.1C times 2. It has Windows 10 64-bit, Nordic keyboard layout and a 4-cell battery that is 67 watt-hours. The bottom of the box just has some serial information on it. The side has more serial information on it. The other side just has the ASUS logo on it. And up top you just have the handle to carry it and the factory sealed sticker. So for once I did not buy this as an open box. I actually got it at a 20% sale at one of the retailers in Sweden. So that it was at a decent price level around 1000 euros, which is about $1100 or so, instead of the usual 1250 euros that it would be sold at here in Sweden. Today we are going for a smaller unboxing knife than usual. So let's see what is in the box. I know ASUS to have quite nice unboxing experiences, so let's see if this one lives up to the hype. There you go. In search of incredible, the laptop is being lifted up and presented up top. One of the best unboxing experiences there is from any of the laptop brands, I think. Then we take out what I suppose is the charger at first, here on the side. Here we have the USB-C charger, and this is a 65 watt charger. So that's quite a small size for a 65 watt charger. And I think this cord can be actually of a pretty good length as well, even though it doesn't have the extra power cord here. We then also find the infamous 3.5 millimeter headphone to USB-C adapter. So this is the way to get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in this laptop. Under the laptop we find the user guide and the warranty card. And then we have the laptop itself which is super lightweight and I really like the quality feel of it when picking it up here. 
Since the weight is one of the main selling points about the laptop, and it is said to be around 1.2 kilograms, I was super keen to check this out straight away. And it is actually clocking in at 1442 grams, which is quite a bit heavier than the specification says. This is interesting, like that's a pretty big difference to be honest. And uh, yeah, something that I haven't really experienced before, such a big difference in specification to real life weight. Uh, at the second weighing it weighs 1176 grams. I don't know how that first weight was possible to produce. The laptop is covered up in some uh, plastic here, so let's remove this and see how it feels when we get inside it. All right, there we have it. It's got the Asus logo up top here. And I like that it's adjusted to the side and that it has those rings that come out from it. It gives the laptop a very professional look. Let's see if we can open it with one hand. That was no problem at all and it lifts up smoothly onto the ergo lift hinge as you can see there. We've got some protective sheets of uh, fabric here that I'm going to move to the side so that we can see the laptop on the inside here. I really appreciate the overall look of this laptop, both with the small bezels up top and on the sides, the very wide keyboard layout and the numerical and wide trackpad that it has. On the left hand side we have two USB-C ports and one HDMI port. On the right hand side we have one USB-A port and one micro SD card reader, together with a power indicator. Let's switch it on and make sure to install Windows so we can get a bit more of first impressions from using the laptop. There seems to be no power in this unit so I will plug in a USB-C cable and we'll see if we have more luck. When plugging the USB-C cable in, the power button has a little LED on it that starts lighting up, which is quite a nice touch. Then I guess you see that it's taking charge. And then the laptop is starting up right away and you get the ASUS in search of incredible logo showing up. We get the first look on the screen, which I will say is a pretty good good first look. The color reproduction seems quite fine. It's not washed out or anything like this that I have experienced before. As you can see down here we've got a bit of a cover for the trackpad and I'm not going to remove this just yet because I need to double check some quality control stuff to make sure that things are the way they are supposed to be before I decide that I'm going to keep this laptop and start removing stickers etc. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? Now, let's get you connected to a network. The network you chose needs some more information before allowing an internet connection. Follow the instructions now to finish connecting. There we are logged into Windows and this is very interesting because immediately now when starting it up I can hear more coil whine than I have in my Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. And we're talking like really bad coil whine here. I'm currently trying it out with my Hyperjuice GAN 100 watt charger. I'm going to place the microphone next to the laptop so you can hear how much this sounds. I'm not used to coil wine at all, but I'm definitely not used to coil wine to the point where you hear it immediately when you start the laptop up. When unplugging the laptop, there is no coil wine coming from it, 
and I wonder if this is possible to fix in some way. I'm gonna have to plug the charger turned each way into each of the USB-C ports to see if there is a difference. I plug it into the other USB port and immediately the same kind of a coil wind starts. Turning it around and plugging it in again. It's better. There is no coil wind. Okay, then... Oh, there it starts. That really high-pitched noise. Okay, I'm gonna try with the original charger just to make sure that this is not an error with my charger. That is the original 65 watt charger. Currently there is no coil wine coming from the laptop at all. That is a little bit promising actually. I'm gonna try the other USB-C port. And there is no coil wine coming from the laptop. Okay, that is great. I'm very happy about that. Then I know that as long as I'm using the original charger, I won't have to worry too much about it going crazy with coil wine. The second issue I have here is that I don't seem to be able to connect to my Wi-Fi. It is prompting me to update my certificates and uh, I'm not sure why it says this. Because I've never had to do this before. The Wi-Fi has always been super smooth to connect to. There is also this thing that the uh, trackpad rattles a lot when you tap it down in the bottom parts. However, when tapping up top here, there is no problem with it. Ah, finally I can access my Wi-Fi here. Okay, that's cool. Then I can give a first go to the numerical keypad that is built into the touchpad. Let's see how this works. A good thing to see is that the touchpad works at the same time as I have activated the numerical keyboard that is built in. Using the numerical keypad is actually really a joy. I'm so happy to have a numerical keypad in such a small form factor. It's something that I haven't tried before in any other laptop. The screen is matte, it seems fairly color accurate and it is bright enough for my needs. It is uh, stated at 400 nits and I'm not sure if it seems that bright, but at least it is bright enough for anything I would need it for. I appreciate the screen a lot and it's a little bit better than the Yoga Slim 7 I would say. The trackpad is big and wide in size, but the most obvious thing here is when tapping that you hear this rattling sound. So all the way down here you hear the rattling sound, but when you move up here you don't hear it anymore. Let's try the keyboard out and see what I think about it. Uh, the first thing I notice about it is that it has this non-standard enter key that is cut off in half, which I don't really appreciate in general. It's going to be interesting to see if I can get used to this kind of an enter key. I thought the keyboard at first would be a little bit too low travel and that I would be very annoyed about that split up enter key. I have to say though I really like typing on this keyboard and the speeds I'm getting up to is a lot better than I thought they would be so it's a positive first experience from the keyboard. Let's listen to the speakers quickly. That is a bit better than I thought it would be because the speakers are down firing so they are not up here together with the keyboard. But still they sound very good and loud here at max volume. 
Uh, I didn't think they sounded that good when Cortana was starting there when I was installing the laptop, so a bit better now when playing some music. I was trying to set up the Windows Hello, but this almost seems like a joke since this was the issue I had with my Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 4700U that the camera was not working. And I can't get the camera to work here either, and there is a privacy setting down here. I pressed this one, but there is no difference. I have checked the settings in Windows and there is no difference. So this might be another interesting quality control fail, but let's see if I can get it to work the upcoming days. During the time I've used it, I've done a few different things and the fans has been running constantly. So there's a few things with this laptop that I'm not a big fan of and I need to see if I can make adjustments to this because otherwise I don't think it's going to live up to my expectations. Fast forward a day and I can say that it definitely didn't live up to my expectations. I was really giving this laptop a fair chance but it's got to be a limit to how many bad things there can be in one single unit for you to call it off as like a plain quality control fail. This laptop has several really bad problems and I was running all the Windows updates to make sure that it wasn't just about the laptop not being updated. It still had a non-working webcam even though I was running all the different drivers updates and I was testing out switching off privacy modes both with the hardware button and the software button in Windows. It had a fan that was running pretty much constantly. You could switch it to whisper mode in the ASUS software, but in whisper mode it would run really hot. So you had two options where one was running it really hot or one was running the fans constantly. Because of these issues I decided pretty quickly that I was going to go and return it already the day after I picked it up. But I decided to run a few benchmarks just so I could include them here and see if it was performing at a good level so that I could share some more stats with you and not only the disappointing unboxing and first try experience. So I was running Cinebench plugged in and got 2178 points. Cinebench on battery power got 2069 points. The SSD in Crystal Disk Mark plugged in got 1988 MB read and 951 MB write. While on battery power the SSD got 1579 read and 952 write. I was also trying out a quick edit and render project in DaVinci Resolve and the good thing was there I didn't have the same issues as I have had on my Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 where the software wouldn't work after I would for example add an advanced title onto the timeline. I wasn't doing any advanced editing with this laptop, I didn't really have time to test it out that much. So I was just doing the quick benchmarks and I made the realization during testing it for a day that it's not good enough and it's being marketed as a premium laptop and it's got those severe quality control fails. It might just have been this unit that was really bad, but if it got all of those problems, both with the rattling trackpad, with the fans running constantly, and the webcam not working. I'm not willing to give the Zenbook 14 another go here. I will just be moving on to some other brand and see if there is anything coming up, for example, with the Intel Tiger Lake generation now during the fall. If anyone has other impressions of the UM425 that you want to share, please do so in the comments below. There might be people that really enjoy using this laptop and uh, I'm very much willing to listen to your opinions. So please share them and if you have any other questions about my experience of the laptop, I'm also very willing to uh, answer questions in the comment section below. I'm W2Best, I make videos about tech travel and inspiration and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.